Hello again and welcome back to the channel. Today we're doing a slightly different video for you as we are exploring a different aspect of our vehicles. Um, as you know we have our auto trail tracker that is a Fiat Ducato um, diesel and we also have our little Fiat 500 tow car um, which is an unleaded petrol. But obviously day to day we have our cars we use for um, work and pleasure and we currently run a uh, mini John Cooper Works which is um, a petrol um, but quite a powerful um, little car um, and we also have a BMW X3 and that is the 3 litre um, diesel and what we're realising is um, that not only takes quite a bit of fuel um, but could we do something slightly different now given that we have solar um, panels on our house and we have the space to um, have an electric box for an electric vehicle. So is now the time to consider getting an electric car? So what I'll show you in the moment is a current setup at home. So we have solar panels on our south facing roof and it is pure south facing. So when it is a really bright sunny day we do get a good amount of power generated from those. And we also have an arrangement with our driveway um, and path at the side of the house that means that where the electric meters are there is a logical place for us to install a um, electric box to power the electric vehicle. So. I'll show you those now and you can see why we are considering taking this step. As you can see the solar panels sit on the back of our roof and we've got 14 panels that feed into the system and these came with the house, they were built in. So this is one of the main reasons we want to take advantage of the power that we are generating to use for the house but also what can then feed into using for an electric car. We already take advantage of the solar um, by running these aircon units into the kitchen diner and um, the master bedroom. And this on a nice sunny day like it is today um, means they're running for free um, and that is a great bonus but we know we can get more out of this solar system and want to now consider how that feeds into the electric vehicles. So you will be familiar with our little toad, our little tow car, our Fiat 500 but this has been our main car for the last couple of years and um, this is our BMW X3. Now as you will see from our parking arrangement we have um, a driveway and a um, electric meter just to the side of the house. Now this means we can very easily get the electric um, charging point attached to this wall here that, that many on our development have done. So the intention is to get an um, OMI um, Octopus Energy um, charging point here that means we can park the vehicle up and charge in this space here. Well we've had the BMW X3 for almost two years and we've put a good number of miles on that and have run it well. Um, serves well as our kind of day-to-day -day car when we're out and about in evenings and weekends as well as the mileage that I put on it in commuting to work and, and traveling across the East Midlands so it has served as well but now we're at that point of considering do we change the car is this the step we take in getting into an electric vehicle so we have decided it is something we want to do and we have looked at a number of vehicles and put them on a shortlist and considered what we would like to um, purchase. So first up was, do we want a Tesla? Well, they're great cars, there's no denying that. But for me, they have been around for some time now. They um, 
are beginning to look a bit dated in their design. Tesla are deleting a couple of the models. They, they will no longer be sold in right-hand drive for the UK. Um, and some of their new bigger models won't even be supported by the Tesla finance schemes. So I do have a hesitation about buying a Tesla. We've also considered looking at a um, Ford Mac E. Now this is where I do have a debate because is this a Ford? Is it a Mustang? Um, it is their main electric vehicle. Um, but I can't get my head around a mass, you know, a, a Mustang with a, a Mac E label added to it. And, and I don't particularly like the design. At the end of the day, it's a Ford. Um, I'm not sure that they are the big players in the EV market at the moment. Um, I think there are some better options. So from the outset, we have ruled out the Tesla and we have ruled out the Ford Mustang Mac E. So where does that bring our choice? So I've naturally come back round to, do we go with a, a German brand? Um, do we go with a premium brand? If I'm being honest, um, the idea of having another BMW would be ideal, but the cost of the iX1 and the iX3 are quite prohibitive. And I think given that we run a couple of cars day to day and we do have our motorhome to run, I think the added expense of you know, 50, 56, 57,000 pounds for a, a BMW iX1, you know, close to 70,000 for an iX3 is significant money. And I just can't justify that. So that has brought our decision round to a short list of three other vehicles, really. That's to look at the VW ID range. It is to look at the e-tron range from Audi, and it is to consider the offering from Skoda. So in effect, we're looking at the VW group and the options they have. So the three choices really to give us a similar sized vehicle to what we've had with the X3 um, brings a short list of the ID5, could be the ID4, they are fundamentally the same vehicle. Um, the Audi Q4 e-tron which again comes in a coupe or a, an estate version and then there is the skoda enyaq which itself comes in traditional estate and um, suv or coupe styling um, they, they are all fundamentally the same vehicle underneath they, they share uh, a lot of the common architecture of the vw group vehicles um, and there's very little difference in kind of size space but what it comes down to is price and spec and what you get for um, the money with each of those vehicles and balancing whether we want to go brand new or do we want to go for a pre-loved um, almost dealer demonstrator type vehicle for this um, swap out so let's have a look at those three options This is not about premium. It's about being smart and creating meaningful connections. Hello, ID. Take me home. This is not about premium. It's about redefining it. The all-electric ID5 and ID5 GTX SUV Coupe redefined. Volkswagen. Where do we go from here? So the first decision we've made is to
go with um, a second-hand vehicle. So at the moment, um, all of the manufacturers are offering some good deals on their pre-loved and um, almost dealer stock vehicles. So there's a good selection out there right now. And what we have done is considered um, what difference there is between a monthly payment, if you like, for for a new and a used. And actually, for a, a six-month-old vehicle, the, the difference is significant um, on, on what the new list price is. And obviously, there's the, the new VAT um, that features in that as you, you drive it off the, the forecourt brand new. Um, but there are also some significant variations between um, the three manufacturers as well. So that's what we're weighing up, what deal we can find for something that's about six months old um, from one of those VW Group um, manufacturers. We know we can get a good price for our X3 right now because the used market is staying quite strong and um, we can get a good deal whichever route we go on, on the, the X3. Um, and we've also seen that VW are offering a £2,000 um, dealer contribution. I think it might even be a VW contribution um, towards any of their um, used vehicles at the moment. So in terms of used prices on the X3 and um, dealer contributions um, for deposits, that actually is a, a very good starting point in being able to switch out. So the main difference between <clears throat> the three vehicles um, is just specification really. Um, Skoda traditionally offers a lot of good value for money, um, but they are still quite pricey for that Skoda Enyaq. You know, a brand new one, you're still looking at the, the £50,000 mark. Um, six months old, used for, for a mid-range, you, you know, you're looking a good £40,000 plus. Um, the Q4 e-tron, again, that actually comes less well specced overall. Um, you'd need to pay a lot more to spec that vehicle up, I guess, for the, the, the Audi badge. Um, but again, you know, used prices are holding strong for, for six months old um, vehicles. What we are finding is the, the better value vehicle is actually the ID5, um, the coupe version. Now, VW charged a premium for this when it was launched. It is essentially the ID4, and this is what we've been looking at and comparing, but it is in a coupe style, and, and I quite like the look of that, that styling. Um, but the difference in getting a fully loaded car with all the toys, all the gadgets um, that we've got on the X3, some additional things that we haven't got um, like a heated front screen, um, Apple CarPlay that I don't have on the, the X3, these are all included um, and there's a good range at the minute of the dealer demonstrators and dealer vehicles um, coming up for sale under the £40,000 mark, um, some sort of the 35, 36, 37,000 um, at six months old and if we bear in mind that um, dealer contribution as well with your deposit there are some good deals to be had. So we've spent the last few weeks looking at all three of those options and um, it's looking like it's the which we're quite excited about. So stay tuned in this video and we'll let you know how we get on. So the other piece of the jigsaw has been the charging point. So again, we've done quite a bit of research on the different ones that are out there. Um, we considered looking at the Zappi, which um, could plug directly into the solar um, on the roof here. Um, but that one comes in at about £1,400 installed. And considering we run the aircon, as I've already pointed out to you, um, we can run the washing machine, tumble dryers, dishwashers, um, me working from home some days, all come off that electric that's generated through our solar. Um, is there any advantage in us doing that? And often um, these systems insist that your, your house takes what it needs first before what's left over comes to your vehicle. So was it worth getting the, the Zappi? Not convinced. Um, 
then there are a number of other options out there, but the one we've decided to go with is the recommended one from VW, which is the Octopus Energy, and it is their only um, charging point, and that comes in at about a £1,000 um, installed. Um, and that comes with a tethered cable as well to go to the, the vehicles that you choose to charge. So we're about to book the installation for that and um, it seems a sensible choice because our energy renewal will be coming up very shortly and we are looking at some of the um, EV um, options that come with Octopus so it may be that we do switch out into one of their deals away from British Gas um, so we'll keep you posted. So whilst this is not exactly a post about our motorhome travels or a um, holiday or a trip or, or a weekend away, um, there is a relevance here to why we are kind of gearing up to um, the EV revolution, if you like, for vehicles. As you will be aware, a number of commercial vehicles themselves are now um, going electric. Um, they do exist in the marketplace from a number of the manufacturers. And I can see ultimately in time that those will feed their way down into um, motorhomes. It, it's going to come, it's, it's going to happen. And I don't think that this will be without its challenges um, on two fronts really. One is going to be about battery range, um, weights of motorhomes, and that in turn will present a challenge around licensing for, for drivers as well, um, particularly if you're carrying the, the, the weight of batteries around um, in the vehicles. So I think there are a number of unknowns still to come in that sector, but ultimately I can see in time that we might be plugging a commercial cab, if you like, at the front of a motorhome into one of these charging points in the future. Um, so this is a preparedness. It's also a preparedness for, for changing out um, Jamie's Mini when that, when that comes around um, and focusing really on, on doing what we can in, in the electric space. Um, be interested to see where that goes, be interested to see what the government do with um, the C1 licensing, whether they'll follow suit with what they did with caravans and, and the B1 um, issue for people with their licenses post 97. So I know there's no answer to that one, but I think the government will need to address that, particularly if commercial vehicles may um, rely on, on younger drivers um, that perhaps go over that, that three and a half tonne, whether that be for driving commercially or whether it be for, for leisure in a motorhome. An interesting time ahead there, I think. So this morning I am off to Marshall's um, Volkswagen down in Milton Keynes um, to collect um, a Volkswagen ID5. So I will hit the road and I will see you as we get to the dealer. So we are just coming into Kingston in Milton Keynes, um, just going past the Costco there, and the VW garage is just behind the Costco, um, just behind the retail park here. So my appointment is with Sanjeev who has taken us through the test drive and um, purchasing process and we're going to do the handover with him today. 
say. And here we are, this is um, the Marshall's um, showrooms. They've got VW, Volvo, Skoda, um, all lined up down here. going to be finding a spot in this um, VW car park. As you can see, quite a well-stocked forecourt here at Marshalls. If I just take you around the corner here, you'll see that it's all ready to go. So this is what we've selected, an ID5. Okay, so we did it. We bought an ID5. And here we are. This is our ID5 from Marshalls in Milton Keynes. Very excited about this. Fully electric. It's got a nice panoramic roof really comfortable seats just had a lovely drive back in it for its first go not too tricky coming from an automatic getting used to the driving setup but absolutely thrilled I made the switch so this is a pro tech model so a very smooth handover today at Marshalls in Milton Keynes. Um, really pleased with the customer service we've had um, and Sanjeev, our um, sales advisor there, who has been great through the whole buying process, um, in particular with demonstrating the car today and, and how to use all its features. Um, just really pleased to now have it at home and get used to it. So what we'll do in one of our future videos, I will do a full review. Um, perhaps after a month of owning the ID um, and seeing how it feels, um, how we're getting on, uh, real world mileage from the charging. And by that point, we should have had the um, Omi charger installed as well. So watch out for that in a future video.